I was kindly sent a ZX Dandinator 2.1 Mini Plus Multiply by the very lovely Arcadey off of Twitter. If you like your retro gaming technology, give him a follow. He's a genuinely nice guy and partial to a Taitung Einstein, along with some other less obscure 8-bit machines. A ZX Dandinator is a cartridge for the ZX Spectrum range of computers. It works with the whole range of speckies, from the rubber key originals all the way up to the plus three. In its standard form, the Dandinator is a programmable cartridge you can flash with your own software in the expected way, to behave just like a proper cartridge would on a Spectrum. It also has the facility to work as a diagnostic cartridge, which is very handy for me, as so far this is something missing from my armoury. Also built into the Dandinator Mini is a Kempston compatible joystick port. As well as the main Dandinator cartridge kit, Arcadesy has sent me the Multiply add-on. This provides extra functionality and adds a very handy SD card slot. The Multiply add-on connects to the Dandinator via the joystick port and has a pass-through Kempston joystick port of its own, so you don't lose that functionality. For more and probably more accurate information, a lot of this is way above my skill level, you should visit the Dandinator website here. There's also a CPC Dandinator version for those of the more Amstrad 8-bit persuasion. Job 1 is build the Dandinator mini board, and the first job is to make the edge connector the right size. There are a lot of different ways of doing this, bench grinder, belt sander, etc. My old fashioned head prefers to go with a file. Handy to have a bench vise to hold it steady, but be careful not to crush the plastic. Once we get a good fit, I smooth off the rough ends with some fine grip paper. It's always a good idea to clean any contaminants off the circuit board before beginning to solder the parts on. For a great build video on the Dandinator Mini 2.1, you should check out Mark Fix's Stuff's video. Link in the description and probably in the corner. The diode and two resistors are the lowest height components, so they go in first. And then follows a bunch of ceramic capacitors, including the one I end up removing for the multiply mod. If I build this again, I'd just leave this one off. The sockets are next, using everyone's favourite sticky blue stuff to hold them in place. I like to spread the heat out when soldering this type of socket just to reduce the chance of damaging the plastic. A couple of pin headers and the switches after that. The switches are not square so it will only fit in one way. Ah yes, now I've read the instructions. I've noticed I don't need capacitor C3. I could desolder it but there's not much point really. So I chop its legs off.
This is now part of the multiply modification. In order to connect the multiply board to the dandinator, the joystick port needs to be converted into a serial port. For this to work, I need to connect a wire between one of the joystick port pins and where the capacitor was at C3. Doing this at this point in the build before the joystick port is attached means you can run the wire on top of the PCB rather than the bottom. This handy hint came direct from Arcadesy. Before I fit the edge connector to the board I need to create a key. A small piece of cut down scrap circuit board sanded to the correct shape and size works perfectly. I know another method is to drill through both sides and glue a thin rod into place, but we work with the materials at hand, especially if we're cheapskates like myself. With the key in place it's time to attach the connector to the board. The trick here is to get the pins bent to just the right angle so they grab the board lightly. Once it's carefully positioned, solder a few pins to lock it in place and then solder the rest. Lots of flux and lots of solder. These need to be good strong connections as this will be the point of most stress. Thanks to the flux you can see the solder flowing up the pins making a really good mechanical connection. And with the chips plugged in, this part of the job is done. Forgetting I had modified the board, I did check it worked off camera. And even without the capacitor and with the wire mod in place, it worked fine. Next, the multiply add-on board. This is a nice simple build, just a couple of passives, uh, the connectors and an Arduino Pro Mini to attach to the board. Also the SD card slot. Before I can attach this I need to remove the connector pins that it comes with. These need to be straight and not angled. I'm using my lovely engineer solder sucker today, one of my favourite tools. A little tweak with the pliers and the last of the solder lets go. One diode and one resistor. Then a 10 pin connector for the ribbon cable which will connect this to the joystick port on the main dandinator board. The new joystick port on this board is next. The prongs that hold it in place are a bit long and will foul the bottom of the SD card reader board so they get filed down to avoid shorts. This seems to have distracted me and as I watch the footage back while I edit it, I realise I forgot to solder the big support pins on the joystick port. It's nice and solid and doesn't get a lot of stress from my personal use, so that should be okay. Something to repair later if it breaks. 
The last thing is the Arduino, one of my favourite gadgets. It's a lot easier just to put the pin headers in the board and the Arduino on top and then just solder it all together. Saves trying to line up the pin headers. For neatness I snip off all the ends of the header pins and then give it a wash down with IPA. And with the cable connecting the two parts together it's time for a test. Perfect. Everything works as it should. Arcadi programmed the Dandonator part before he sent it to me with the correct software to allow access to the multiply functions. Once that's been run once, the next time it's used the multiply interface comes up without any interaction as you see here. Loading a game is a simple matter of selecting one from the many thousands available using a joystick or the assigned keys and off you go. There are two buttons on top of the Dandonator. The right button allows you to take a snapshot of a game in progress. Very handy for cheating at challenges. The left button, if you hold it down at switch on, will activate diagnostic mode. This helped me out very recently, diagnosing some broken RAM chips on an issue 248k Spectrum. So it's already saved me a lot of time and headache. Once I knew it was all working, I printed a simple case for the Dandonator, which I found on Thingiverse, link in the description. I couldn't find a case for the Multiply, but once again, Arcadi came to the rescue and designed one, which I printed in the same luminous PLA. Part of the lid on my print delaminated, but a dab of my favorite cyanacrylite glue, and it's good to go. Thanks to Arcadi for sending me the Dandonator, and thank you all for watching. Goodbye.